I've posted the link inside of the chat so that you can have it. Um, and this guide, you can use this as a reference and also as a checklist. So one of the things that um, are available to you, so if you guys are familiar with me or maybe you're new to me, let me just kind of explain to you my concept of marketing and uh, really the three major goals that you should have when you are marketing your business. Um, the first is to try and attract new people to your business so that you can always have a stream of leads that you're working through to ultimately sell to. The second thing that you should be doing as a marketer, and that's what, exactly what you guys are as you're a marketer, is you should be trying to build relationships. So for as many leads as you're getting in your travel business, you should have some mechanism to build relationships and then last, you should be converting. So you should be asking for the sale. Um, and that's referred to as my ARC process. So attract, relate, and convert. And webinars are really great for the middle, which is relationships. So building relationships with your prospects, your existing clients, it's a really powerful way to get people to know you in a very short period of time. And so um, hosting virtual events, in-person events, webinars, trainings, looks, you know, sneak peeks at locations or however you want to call it is a really great relationship builder. It also positions you as an expert. So that's really the why doing a webinar makes sense. I, I know of a lot of advisors that um, partner with suppliers they uh, partner with other travel advisors and they create these sort of events. Well, there's a lot of technology potentially that can go into the hosting of a virtual event. You know, pre-COVID, it was not as common, um, I think, for people to know what Zoom is. Now, Zoom post-COVID is a household name. Um, so you've been a part of some sort of virtual event if you're an active travel advisor. I just did a search last night as I was putting together this presentation, just in my inbox, how many webinars I get invited to through suppliers. How many do you guys get invited to? I get invited to quite a bit, like there's at least five or six a day that are in my inbox. Do you guys get invited to uh, supplier um, information sessions or webinars or training? Every day. Every single day, right? And so the suppliers are doing it, right, for you and potentially for their audience of people, and so should you. So this should absolutely be a tool that's in your toolkit. And so today's training, what we're going to do is talk about what do you need to host a successful webinar, and then how do you actually get that set up? So if you're using Travel Pro Suite, if you're on the premier level, I am actually going to launch a lot of what I'm showing. If you're on the basic level, I'll at least show you what you need to do so that you can successfully set this up yourself. All right. All right, so before you begin, and this is going to be the case with anything that you do that I'm going to do a training, I'm going to ask you, what are your goals? Why are you doing this? Like, what, what's the purpose of the webinar? And so the first thing is, what are your goals? And just like I mentioned what the marketing process is, right, attracting, relating, or converting, your webinar could fall in those three categories. Are you hosting a webinar to introduce your business to people? Do you want to get leads? Do you want to use it as a way to introduce a trip to an existing audience of people that you have? Or is it to strangers? Is it the webinar purely going to be to sell a trip that you, you know, maybe you're going to host a webinar and it is, you know, for your immediate tribe to let them know that, hey, the doors are open and I'm ready to sell this and let's find out all about it. Each of those reasons and goals are going to dictate the content that you include in the webinar. I literally could do an entire training on the actual webinar presentation. This training isn't really gonna focus on the content of the webinar as much as setting up the webinar and just making sure that you have a real good idea of why you're hosting the webinar, okay? But the first thing is, what are your goals? If it's to attract strangers, if it's to build relationships with your existing market, maybe to introduce 
a product or service or just to talk about what, what it is that you do, right? There's a, a multitude of reasons. Let's define the goal. So for those of you are all, all that are on now and you're thinking about hosting a webinar, what are some of the reasons that you would like to host a webinar for? No um, getting eyes on your business, introducing your business to people so that they are more inclined to book. Because more, I know that people, if they don't trust you or they don't know you, they're not going to spend the type of money that we're asking our clients to spend with us. You got it. That's so correct, Jocelyn. So the reason um, to host a webinar is just as an information to get to know you, right? So the topic may be, instead of you trying to focus specifically on a trip, maybe it's a problem of what your audience has. Like one of the clients that I'm working with, she works with uh, women who who really need to like take a break out of their busy, you know, mom life, work life, and really focus on regenerating themselves, right? So the main problem that those women have is they're working, working, working. And the thought of taking a two week or a one week vacation is the really hard for them. So hosting a webinar that's really focused on why it's important to take time out is a great webinar to do, right? So again, the goal of what you want to do will dictate the content. Specifically, the next bullet I'm talking about is who's your who, right? You need to know who your audience is, is going to be for this webinar, because that's also going to influence the content that's included in the webinar, how you potentially, uh, the graphics that you're going to use on the webinar, all of that. So as long as you understand the one and the two, right, the goals and the audience, then the content will become so much easier for you to create. The third item that you need to decide is how are you going to promote a thing? How are you going to promote this webinar? Because just because you build it doesn't mean that they're going to come, right? How many of you guys have built stuff and they don't show up, right? Like how many, how many trips have you created and people don't buy? So my saying is don't build a thing without promoting the thing and don't promote the thing without tracking the thing. So if you're going to do a webinar, the first question you need to ask is, how are you going to get eyes on the event? How are you going to get people to attend the event? How will you promote the event? Don't just think that you promote it one time on your Facebook page and that's enough you need to go through a promotion cycle of at least five or seven times or more that you're talking about this event. Again, promotion is key. Anything that you do in your business requires, and if you build it, create it, you've got to think about how you're going to promote it. So how will you get attendance and where will you promote it? Are you promoting it in your channels and other people's channels? A combination of both. Is it organic? Is it paid traffic? What's the promotion strategy? And then, like I mentioned, if you don't, if you promote a thing, you need to track the thing. So really, where, what are you going to do for results? Like, how are you going to track? Um, how did you do, right? How did you do in terms of the number of people that you got in front of? How many people registered? How many people attended? And how many people did the thing that you wanted them to do at the end of the webinar, which is just to get to know you, maybe join your email list, maybe join your Facebook group, maybe buy something, whatever that is, you want to make sure that you've got some tracking mechanism in, pay, in place to see how well or well, not you didn't do. All right. Either way, any questions on before you begin? These are all real questions that you need to really ask when you get ready to do any sort of event or promotion of a trip. So these steps are going to be the same steps that you're going to hear me when we start talking about general marketing or marketing in general. It's always what's the goal? Who's the audience? How are you going to promote it? And what are the, how are you going to track the results to see if what you plan for, if you realized it or where there's opportunities for you to improve? All right. Any questions? Let me look on uh, chat. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to just put it in chat or come off of. Here's the process for the setup. The first thing is, is that I always say pick a date, right? So pick a date because that just really dictates everything. Pick a date. 
uh, will tell you if you've got enough promotion time, it'll uh, light some fire under your bum. It will uh, make your heart palpitate. <laughs> Pick a date. That's really the first thing that I want you to do for your webinar. So for those that are planning a webinar, what's your date? Like, when would you like to host it? Usually if Today is the 9th of July. I'm going to pick three weeks out, right? Because that's going to give me time to do my images, my content. I usually typically start promoting a, a, a one-day training. I'll typically start about five days before the event. If it's a three or five day, I may start three weeks to four weeks in advance so that I have enough time to promote and get the size of people that I want. So the first thing is going to be to select a date. And then you've got to actually set up the um, webinar. And so there, here's a couple of things. So I'm going to actually jump down to the tools that you need to set up a webinar or an, a virtual training event. You need some sort of meeting platform. So you can see I am doing, um, I, I've got like several platforms. I primarily host my virtual events on um, Zoom, or I host them inside of my Facebook group. You can use Zoom as a meeting platform is really good. I really don't even have any alternatives because I just like Zoom. I've been, I've used several of the meeting platforms, but Zoom is the easiest. It's also, a, you know, a household name now, but if you have another alternative platform, you can use that as well. I think, um, and what you're looking for in terms of features on a platform is the ability to, one, sometimes you may want to do a registration through the platform. Zoom allows you to do that. You want to be able to share your screen and then also have attendees, if you have a guest speaker, to be able to join. StreamYard allows you to do that as well. So between Zoom and StreamYard, I like StreamYard because I can broadcast to multiple locations. But once you've decided your platform, that's it, because you're going to ultimately need to give that URL out to your clients so that they can also join you in the same space. Then the other thing that you're really going to need on step two of the process is you're going to need to promote the event. And when you've got promotion, you're going to need content. So you're going to need promotional content in the form of images. If you're going to do video reels or shorts, which are really great ways to promote, you may want to do that. You'll need presentation content so that you can actually, you know, some people don't present. I'm a huge presenter. So I always like to have some sort of document that I give out and present. If that's not your style, then you don't have to have that. Um, but I always have some sort of pr presentation and handout material. Um, you'll need email content. So how will you um, communicate with your registrationers, registrationees, attendees about the event before the event to remind them and potentially how will you invite people if you have an email list? So email is really important. Um, if you're going to use social media to promote having some sort of social media content with captions, titles, that kind of stuff. And I've already mentioned reels and stories. I, I love virtual events, but what I will tell you is, is that you should treat it like any other commodity that you have, right? So you have a trip. You guys probably spend a lot of effort promoting that trip. Well, a webinar is just a tool that you can use to do the promotion, but all the activity around promotion is the same thing that you should do with events. I like events because I'm a project manager. I'm a certified project manager. I like start and end of things. And so events allow me to plan for them, get them done, and I'm done, <laughs> right? Like, so I'm start and an end. I know exactly what I need to do, and that's what um, it is. So we want to make sure that, and we literally go through all of these things. We have images, we have presentation content, we have email content, we have social media captions and videos, and our events are well attended because we go through that kind of rig rig rigor when it comes to hosting them. The last thing that you need to do is, or identify is a traffic source. So again, where are you going to let people know that your event is occurring? So 
what are some of the traffic sources that you guys are using right now? Email. Email. So you have your own email list or do you go and uh, um, promote through any other means besides your own email list? Um, I'll be starting uh, Facebook ads pretty soon as well. Facebook ads. That is a really great traffic source because you're your audience is there. So Facebook ads are a great way to promote your um, events and or your trips. And so as long as you have a traffic source identified, then you also will know based on that, what kind of promotional content that you need. So if you're going to do a Facebook ad to promote your event, you need to, you, there's several ways that you could do it uh, using a Facebook ad. You can create the event and then promote the event through a boost. You could actually run a, a hard ad through it. Um, you could use Facebook groups. Um, if you have a Facebook group or if you're a part of Facebook groups that your client is in, you could promote through that group provided the administrator is okay with that. But the traffic source is probably the second most important thing to identify when it comes to a webinar is understanding where, where are you going to actually talk about the event and then invite people to the event. All right, now that we have our promotion, then you gotta host the event. So you gotta show up for the event, right? So you gotta create the content, you gotta show up for the event if you've got guest speakers. And I, and I really encourage you all to ask your suppliers, particularly if you're doing a trip event, to ask your suppliers to uh, present for you or be a segment, a part of your event. They love it. Your BDMs, 99% of them will actually have no problem uh, doing that. But what I will tell you is, is that, you know, and this is me, so I'm just going to give you a little inside of me. Some of, the, some of the presentations that the suppliers give are really rather boring. Um, you know, it's just slide after slide after slide. Uh, a lot of them are probably doing it on autopilot. It's not very interactive. And so what I will tell you is if you do invite a supplier and you are a pretty animated person like me, you may ask them to do a Q&A session where you all work through a set of questions that you're going to ask them so that they're prepared because you know your audience so that you can sort of have an interactive kind of session. Those kinds of presentations do really well, not to say that the slide after slide after slide doesn't do well, but change it up. Don't always just say, okay, the supplier, I asked the supplier, and then they bring all of their, you know, hundred slides showing you all of the resort pictures and all the other stuff. And they really, and, and then people are just there and it's not silent. The real objective of a webinar is to get that interaction, get people imagining themselves at the location, at the experience that you're creating. So really the hosting of the event has really two objectives. One, it's to introduce you, your brand. The second is to do whatever it is, right? Teach them about a thing, show them about a thing. And then the third objective of your event is to have them take action, right? Buy, join, subscribe, learn more, whatever that, that call to action is going to be, your hosted event needs to have the next step. I say the same thing to my clients when, when they're booking trips, right? So like if you guys are doing group trips, on the group trip, the end of the trip needs to invite them to another trip. So everything that you do when it comes to a cycle, at the end of that event, you should extend an invitation for the next step, right? The next trip, the next event, the next whatever, right? So your hosting event needs to also have an objective at the end of it. And then that really leads us to number four. If you are hosting an event and you have the next step, then the follow-up series that you do at the end of, uh, the, after the event is really to talk about those next steps. So I, I think that's all that came out. It sounds like it's a little confusing. So I'm going to just pause and make sure that that makes sense. Does that make sense? It does. Okay, perfect. So 
four is really after the event. Like, what are you going to do, right? I typically do an email series. We also do retargeted ads after that. So everyone who's registered, we may run a set of ads that's going to reinforce the next step that I talked about at the end of the webinar. So that's really the process. Set it up, promote it, host it, and make sure that you have some sort of follow-up after the event to ensure that your call to action, the activity or the next step is going to actually be fall, um, achieved from your client base. All right, so now let's talk about how Travel Pro Suite can help you get her done. All right, so I'm going to show you, I have not launched this into the Premier client's account, but let me just show you, let me just talk a little bit about some of this. So well, I tried to do this in a couple of simple steps. One, we've created, let me show you kind of what we've done. We've got a webinar registration funnel that I've created, which is really just the two-step pages. It's really three steps. It's three-step page that will have a page, it will have a registration form, and then a thank you page. So for our premier users, you will get the webinar registration funnel. You will also get the registration form that allow, takes people contact information. And then you'll get the reminder series for those that register. I'm working on an invitation series, but that's not ready yet. So this is what's going to be done for you. I'm going to show you what that looks like because once you see it, then really once the funnel is in your account, all you're going to need to do is update these custom values. And once you update the custom values, your funnel will work and so will your invitation series. All right, so let's, let me show you what that looks like. All right, so when you get into your account and when it becomes available to you, which will be after this training, um, there is a new tab, there's a new folder called uh, general for our premier users. And you're gonna get access to this funnel. And so I'm just going to show you what it looks like. So I didn't put a bunch of data in it, but so what you're going to get is this funnel, which is exactly what I'm modifying. You're going to get your version of the funnel. And what is going to happen is once you update all of these custom values, and I'll show you how to do that, this image will update, this title will update, your benefit statements, all of that, all of these will be, but the structure is going to be available to you. So that is going to be what you're going to get inside of this funnel. All right, so that's clean now. So you'll be able to change all of these. Your logo will be your own custom logo. This title will be your own title. The date of your webinar will be your own. You will have the ability to change out this pictures. So you can change the funnel if you want. But out of the box, what I'm doing is I'm giving you this page with the layout already decided. You can change any of the colors, images, text, and all of that. You also will get this pop-up, which will be your registration form so somebody can fill it out. And then once they fill out the registration form, that will pop them into a automation. And then this is the thank you page that you'll get. So you have the opportunity if you want to do a video here to, let's say you have a Facebook group. So similar to your travel request, thank you page. This is again, a thank you. So every time you do something, you always want to confirm the action. So here's a great opportunity, particularly if you are trying to build um, awareness around who you are and you're hosting that, this could be a great opportunity for you to invite them into your Facebook group, tell them to click the button. You could let them know about maybe an upcoming trip. You could, there's a lot of different things. I love the thank you confirmation page as an opportunity to talk more about the thing or things that I have available for my clients so that they know, right? It's also just a great opportunity to tell them how excited you are to see them in the webinar until it occurs. So this thank you page will be something that you'll have to um, edit as well. And so just like we edit all of our funnels, 
you will have these two pages, the welcome and the thank you. And then this includes a pop-up page, a pop-up page here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you how you can change. And we're, we will actually change this information on the fly. So here, I just put some sort of uh, dummy text just so you can see this. What I'm going to do is now show you in the custom values how you will be able to change this. So you're going to go down to settings to modify. So inside of the guide, these are the custom values that are dealing and they all start with GM webinar. Um, and these are the fields that you're going to want to modify so that your um, webinar funnel and email will bring in the information that you want. So if you go to settings, you go to custom values. Once this gets loaded in your account, you're going to get a new folder and that folder is going to be the GM marketing or I'm sorry, step 90 general marketing. And all of these custom values are going to be here. And all you have to do is just click on them, click edit and custom and edit the custom value. So let's change the name of this and let's call this to Bali example. Click update. And then you'll see that this is updated. And then what's going to happen is your website will then also update with that information. So you don't have to go in and mess with it. Once you decide on the colors, I actually kind of helped you out there. If you're okay with the layout, if you update all of the custom values, your webinar registration funnel page will automatically be updated. So let me just explain to you which each of these values are. This is your main title of your webinar. So what the name of the webinar is, listen, I'm going to tell you, get creative. Use ChatGPT to come up with some really cool names. Make your webinar name catchy because this is what you will be using in your emails and your social media content, in your imagery. So don't be boring here. Make it, uh, make it fun. Use alliteration, whatever it is that you want, but make the, the name of the webinar fun. Then this is going to be your subtitle. So really, I like to think of a subtitle as the promise that I'm going to deliver for the event. So if it's if it's a get to know you session, well, what who is the audience of people that need to get to know me and why do I want them to get to know me? So the subtitle is really around the promise that you will deliver in the event. So that's sort of what I like to do with the subtitle. Your webinar date is going to be the date of the webinar and the time. And in this guide, I talk about the format of the webinar. So it can be in the year, year, month, month, day, or month, month, day, day. So MM, it just means that you can either spell it out or you can use a number. So you could do J-A-N, the three-letter code, or you could spell out January, or you could do 01 for the month. Okay. And then just don't forget to do the time. So, because we do use the time and the automation to build it out. That time is going to be available here. Then your subtitle is going to show up here. And then your next field that you're going to do is a brief description. You guys know how much I love ChatGPT. I do not like the word elevate, transform, boost, <laughs> or anything like that, but you can give ChatGPT the context of what you're doing the webinar for, who the audience is for, and then ask it to help you with a sales page description. And again, that description is going to be used in all of our emails and then also on your web page. So if you put that description here, that's going to pull in into your page. Then we've got three benefit bullets. Now, I want you to think of benefits as to why would your audience member want to attend? And don't get me wrong, nobody cares about you, right? But it's not to get to know you. It's because you uniquely help your client do fill in the blank, or they're going to learn about some piece of information that they've always wanted to learn. Whatever that is, that's what your benefit statements. Nobody cares about room sizes. Nobody cares about the fact that you've got 15 room block, uh, block blocks available. 
that's not why those are not benefit statements, right? So if you're thinking about the features of a trip, right, that is double occupancy, all meals are included, those are not really benefits. So really think of benefits for why somebody needs to be on this trip or why somebody needs to attend the event because they're going to get something out of it that they always wanted or they need, or maybe they don't even know they need. All right. So benefits are really tricky. Stay away from features, really talk about the emotional connection that you want to make with your client. So you get three opportunities to summarize the, those benefits here. Those benefits are going to then show up in these bullets that are here. All right. And then your Zoom link. So if you have a link that people will be able to use to attend the event, you can insert that link here. We'll include that link in the emails that go out to in the reminder series. OK. And then we've got two image links that you can add that are going to dictate the image that is here in this hero area and then the image that's here. I will tell you within Travel Pro Suite, let me show you what you can do. So these links are actually, I got these um, images from um, Pixabay that's available in our media storage. So if you go to, media actually moved a couple of weeks ago, but media is now, media storage is now on the main menu. If you click on media storage and you're looking for an image um, and you don't have it for backgrounds, you can, I, I, I think it's okay to do that. You don't need to pre-design an image in Canva to do a background in a banner on a funnel page. So going to Pixabay and let's just say, I just searched Africa and that's where I got this. So I just, I think I just did Africa and that's where this image came from. Um, and I think I'm using... I think I'm using this image. So if you're using a Pixabay image that's coming from our site, if you just click on it and click on the three dots, you're going to uh, copy that. And that's going to give you the URL that you can then put in the custom value. So let me just go back to the custom values just to show you that. So you can pull in the links from Pixabay that's hosted on our site. You can also upload your own media uh, to your own my uh, my media and then use that link there in those descriptions as well. So let me just show you. I copied that and then I'm going to go back to custom values and then just paste it. I'm actually going to do a different one so you can just see how it looks different. So let's say I'm going to do this flamingo and I'm going to change. I'm going to copy that flamingo and then I'm going to change the custom values to. I'm going to change the, the and it, hold on, let me go back to the folder. And go to that last image. So this is the hero image. That hero image is that banner at the top. I'm going to change this to the flamingo. Delete that and change it to the flamingo here. And then here, I'm going to just refresh my screen. And now the flamingos are back here. So when you update the custom values, it's just going to make it a lot easier for you to just update your webinar. Just go through, update the uh, custom values in the webinar. I mean, uh, update the custom values associated with the webinar. And then your registration page is going to be updated automatically. So there's really not much, you don't even really need to go into the funnel once you update the custom values. So here, this image that, again, you can use an image from Pixabay or you can use an image from that you design. If you're gonna design an image in Canva, I recommend that you do a 1080 by 1080. And that's what I put in the comments of the guide is do a 1080 by 1080. That's gonna be a, a perfect square. The types of things that I like to do usually in a webinar registration on this image is either an image of yourself, maybe an image of you and your guest speaker if you're going to do that. If you are doing a trip, I would probably do a picture of the location of the trip, a really cool picture of the location, and then I have subset a picture of myself. There's really a lot. This, again, is another real estate for you to use and really help um, enforce your brand and what it is that you are doing and what this webinar is for. 
So that image you'll be able to use there as well. This pop-up is gonna go straight to the pop-up. When you, um, let me just tell you too, when you go to this pop-up, this image that's back here is going to be using the same hero image that is at your banner. So you don't have to change that. You could if you wanted to separately, but that's going to be available to you here. I've created this form. If there's more information that you want to capture on your registration form, all you'll need to do is just edit that registration form. So you'll go to sites and there will be a, in the builder, underneath the um, general marketing, there'll be a new form that says uh, webinar registration. So if you want to edit that form, add additional fields, maybe add some custom fields. If you want to do that, you'll be able to do that as well. All right. So that really is, I think we got, went over. So other things that are pulling in from the system from this page is your logo. As long as your logo and you need your logo updated for your other funnels that are in the system. So this is going to be pulling in that same field, your footer and everything. This is also your standard footer that's coming in from your other funnel. So this is pulling in your location, your terms and conditions. It should be your terms of use for your website, your uh, location information and your logo at the bottom. So all of that standard. One of the things I've also introduced, we have not implemented this throughout all of the funnels, but we are, we're right about to do a, uh, a revamp in the next couple of months where we're going to allow you, so I'm gonna introduce it here. Um, so one of the things that we are introducing is this idea of brand colors that you can just update one place and use them in your funnel. So I'm actually using, I think, brand color two, three, and one. I'm for sure using one and two because I don't have anything in three, but I'm gonna be releasing the, these fields so that you can leverage those fields on this funnel. So like if you change your brand color and let's say you've got a teal color, you change that custom value for brand color two, the background's gonna change. So let me just show you that. So I think this is actually brand color one. So I think one of our, um, let's just, let's use brand color, brand, brand color one here, CC. I don't know my colors by heart, CC, B, seven, six, B. And if you guys are using Canva and you, you've got a brand, you've got colors. So you probably have a dark, a light, and a medium color. Those would be the three colors I would use is the, a dark color, your light color, and then your media, your medium color. So I've just updated this here. And what you'll see now is this automatically updates now. So this is using the main primary color here. So again, you can, I think also the footer is using the primary color. So you can modify again, a site pretty easily, your registration page pretty easily by just updating the custom values. We really are going to be trying to introduce this across the board uh, to make it easier because we do have websites that are coming um, as a feature that we will uh, be providing websites for our clients. So. We really want to help make this a lot easier. I'm going to pause and see if there's any questions um, while I show you the last feature, which is the automation that we have built for you. Any questions? Anybody want to come off mute? Ask me any questions? No? All right. So then the last thing that you will see is we've got a webinar registration and confirmation. That's done. I'm going to release that today. The invitation series, um, it's done. It only has one email. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about that. But really what we're doing here is, is once somebody submits the form, we are adding a tag and then we're automatically sending a confirmation email. We're waiting 24 hours before the event. And then we are sending reminder emails all the way up till 10 minutes to the event. So we already have the structure of the email. It's already pulling in the start date at uh, the start date and time of the email um i'm sorry of the event 
pulling in the, the Zoom link, all of that. So as long as you update the custom values, this webinar registration automation will work for you as well. That for our premier users is already going to be loaded into your account, like I mentioned, right after this call. Um, let me just show you the invitation series. I, I, I started to think about like, what's the best way to do an invitation series for you. But instead of me trying to do the promotion for you, at minimum, what we've done is we've done a basic invitation series. What I will tell you is we typically do for our webinars, one day webinars, um, one, one day, because you know, you guys know I do multiple days. I do five day, three day challenges and that kind of stuff. So if it's one day, I typically will start a invitation series, maybe the day before or maybe two days before. But if it's a multiple day, I want a large audience, I'm going to do more. So if you want more people to attend, give yourself more invitation emails that you sent out. In this invitation series, we've at least done the first email. I don't know how many emails you guys want to do, but what I have done is I've set up the most complicated part of the series, which is the time wait statements that you need to have. So I am going to release this today, which is the invite. So this will, you will have to manually add people to this uh automation it will add a tag to let you know that you've invited them it will look at your webinar registration date and then five days before it will send this inv invitation and then you have the opportunity to wait the next day and then you can add a new step an email step if you want to send an email a text or what have you but i've set up a four-day wait statement a Looks like I need to fix this. So I'll set up a four day, a three day, a two day, a one day before the event, and then one hour before the event and 10 minutes before the event. And again, this is not a reminder for them to register uh, that they've already registered. This is a reminder to register. So we do, when it comes to promoting a webinar, we want to send our list of people or whoever we put in this automation reminders to register. And once they register, they get out of the automation. So we have a goal that's set here that automatically will pull them out of the automation once they've hit the goal that we want. So this invitation series will be available to you as well. The only thing that you will need to do is think about, so these are the things, let me just say done for you. I will, I did it. I did the <laughs> invitation series. I just think you need to modify it. I think you need to add more emails to it. Maybe you don't want to, but at least you have the initial invitation email. Again, the more repetition that you get, the more success that you're going to see that people will register. People just need these kind of reminders. So that's going to be done for you. Things that you will need to do is you will need to, let's say, modify, add to your invitation series. Modify invitation series. And then you need to create a follow-up series. So after the event, what do you want to occur? What is it that you want? What's your call to action? Is it to buy a trip? Is it to join your Facebook group? Is it to get on the wait list? What's the next step that you want to do? And based on that next step, you want to create an invitation. You want to create an email series too, because you have their email address, right? You invited them. You got them on your list. Now they're a part of your tribe. You want to send some sort of follow-up series. Generally, I send between three and five, sometimes seven days worth of email series, depending on how big it is. I may even do a nine day series. So really, you need to define the follow up, your follow up game. The money is in the follow up. OK, then at your social media marketing, you can use our platform to post your social media post to your group, to your sorry, not your group. So Facebook uh, you can do your business pages, your business Facebook page, your business uh, Instagram page, TikTok, LinkedIn, uh, Pinterest, and Twitter. Like, so you can schedule all your posts. So I would recommend that you schedule them. You can also segment anyone who registers for your event by a tag. And so you can do that in the contact record. I like to segment people as they're going into my event so that I can 
Like if I want to send them a special, uh, a special something, a special email later, something, I just want to know that those people registered for my event. I do like to tag them and then also create smart lists inside of the system. And so to create that smart list, just going to show you really quick and then I'm going to open it up for any questions. So you can always create a smart list of any contact that is in the system based on any criteria. So if I wanted to create a web a webinar smart list, so people who have joined my webinar, I would just then use this webinar um, registration. Maybe I want to I want to segment them by people who I've invited um, and, uh, you know, invite them to the next one. So that's something that you can do here. All you have to do is just select the criteria and then apply it and then you get the opportunity to save it. And once you save it, you can give it a name. Registration, click save. And then what's going to happen is that that smart list is going to be here. I don't have anybody that meets the criteria, so that's why it's not there. If you have an admin, the one thing I just want to let you guys know for those that have uh, uh, team members that are helping you is, is if you create a segment, you just want to make sure that you go to manage smart list and you actually see this, this new smart list that you've got and you just want to share it because it will only be available to you. And I, cause this has happened to me so many times. I've been like, I created this list, go send out an email to them. And they're like, I don't see it. So you just need to make sure that you've got share with all users on your account. All right. I'm going to pause and see if there's any questions. That is how you host and set up a webinar inside of Travel Pro Suite and also how you do it yourself. If I have a cruise ship in Canva that has a motion look, can I use that in your template? Yes, absolutely. So in the um, and so that URL, it's it's just a URL. So let me just show you what that looks like, Tanya. That's actually a really good question because you can use video. Um, let me just show you inside of the site. We're just pulling in the URL. So the the custom value. Let's just say um, in your media storage, the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to upload the video or the GIF or whatever that thing is, right? Um, and then based on that, once you upload it, I don't even know if the account has any, I don't know that we have any video, but once you upload the video, Tanya, you're going to be able to get the link. You're going to get the link. You'll copy that link and you'll put that link in your um, site. So the only thing that you're going to want to do differently if you're using video is when you're in the funnel here on that first page, we assume image, but you can change it to a video. I'm just going in the funnel and showing you where you would do that. So if you upload a custom value and it's video right here, you just wanna hover over that, make sure you've got that purple here and on the right hand side where it says background media image, instead of that being image, you wanna turn that to a video. And that's how you can, so you can always have motion. I just will let everyone know when you're using video on a site, um, load time, you just wanna make sure that it's compressed. Um, it's a short video because, you know, this is an opt-in type of form. You, and if it, you got a real heavy load on a video that's really big and large, even with your image files, you just wanna make sure it loads in a really good time period. Okay, great question though. All right, let me see if there's any other questions. Perfect, all right. Um, all right, I if you guys don't have any questions, this is what it looks like <laughs> to do a, a, a webinar. Joy, are you there? I think you're there. Are you still there? I think she may have dropped. All right, any other questions? Uh, Ashley, you got any questions? I know you and Joy are working on this. When will it be available? Ah, <laughs> so for our premiere, I'm going to be launching it uh, this afternoon. I just need to make okay. a correction. So I'm going to launch it um, this afternoon. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. If you are not a premiere member, 
um, the this this functionality won't be available to you, but you can build it. So having the funnel, really the steps are going to be the same. You need to have a funnel. You need to have um, some sort of email series that's going to at least at minimum remind them, and you still need to have promotion. So um, perfect. Will we get the recording? Absolutely. So. Just let me uh, show you another little great thing that we've done um, to you, for you, since we are sort of in the show and tell mode. Let me show you where you can always get this recording. So inside of our community, one of the things that we've added is, um, so inside of the Travel Pro Suite community, I've added these links that are right here on the right hand side. So if you click on knowledge base, any all of these trainings. So my intention, oh, that's the wrong, sorry. Actually, live replays, what I should have done. That's the actual technical live training replays. Those are all going to be here. So if I'm doing like even small videos that teach you how to do a thing, I'm putting them all in this location. So they're categorized by our workflows. Um, also, the release notes are going to be here in anything relative to, for our uh, affiliate program. So this one is actually getting launched, I think, tonight. So the replay of that will be available in this knowledge RL tonight. So we've got a lot of like any sort of video that I've done in the last two months. They're here and any announcements that we have. I also do all of our release notes here. And this is really becoming a searchable feature for you all too. So we will be adding a lot more stuff here. Really going to be trying to utilize our community inside of Travel Pro Suite to house this kind of stuff. Facebook is really great, but uh, you know what I do know about Facebook is that sometimes it goes down. It's really hard to organize information in Facebook in the community. So this is the reason why we really wanted to make sure that we centralize all of this. Also remember all of our master classes on any of the workflows are in the learning tab and they're here inside of the community. So as we add additional major master classes, this is where they will be. And then any of the small sort of knowledge kind of trainings like I'm doing today, that will be available inside of our live training replay. All right, any other questions? No? Yes, Linda. Yes, Linda. Would this be attached to Travel Pro Suite, or will it be separate? Uh, what do you mean attached? Will Will it be on this an extension of Travel Pro Suite? What? The, or is this a different? Or is this a different? A uh, whole new different? Um. The, what I just showed you. Yes, is that different from Travel Pro Suite? No, it's in. It's a part of Travel Pro Suite. Like it. When let me share you. Let me share it again. So okay. when you go, when you're in Travel Pro Suite, um, if you go to the bottom right, oh, I got a demo. Like, do you guys have like five minutes? I, I, yes, I, want, I do. Since I have you guys on, I want to show you this feature too. If you go on the left-hand menu and you go to Travel Pro Portal, do you see that? That's going to take you to the community and all the training I just mentioned. Do you see that, Tanya? Yes, I see it. Yep, so when you click on here, it just launches a new tab. It's going to take you directly to this community that I just um, uh, showed you. Okay. Okay. And is that where I upgrade or a no? Um, if you want to upgrade, uh, let me show you. You all should have the ability to upgrade yourself, but if you want me to do it for you, if you go to settings and then you go to company billing, you should be like, this is our demo account, so we don't have a payment method you'll get an option. It'll be right here at the top. And then you just click upgrade and then you can upgrade and then it'll send me the information I need. And then we'll get all the premier features. Here's another new feature. I'm actually going to dive deep into this next week, but this uh, video pro manager for premier has been added to, to y'all's account. I did an announcement a couple of weeks ago, but um, I'm not going to let too much. Uh, the cat's already out of the bag. But this is really a way for you guys to get client testimonials. I think I launched a video on it last week. So if you guys are interested in that, just tag me inside of the Facebook group and I'll tag you on the, the video that I did on this one too. But this is the way a way inside of our platform for you guys to 
request a video testimonial from your client and then actually get the video show up in your list and download it and then you can use it in your own marketing. So you guys have tri have clients who are on amazing trips. You want to be asking for those testimonials while they're on a property um, and then you can actually ask them and then get the video right here. They don't need to download anything. It's all connected in the system. So I'm pretty excited about that feature too. All right. I am one minute Thank over. you so much, Sunday. I like to be sensitive to you all's time. You guys are so welcome. Listen, my goal is, is to come every week to you guys with some sort of specific training around the um, tool. So this is our first week doing that. Next week, we've got a topic. I already in the Facebook group and also in the community told you the schedule for this month. So, you know, 12 o'clock Tuesdays is my goal unless we have a workshop, okay? Two weeks in August, I'm going to be on vacation. So we are going to be in Bali. Um, so that's the only time I won't be doing that. All right. Uh, I think I answered all the questions. I am two minutes over. With that, you all have a great uh, day and I will see you next week. Have a great night.